Hi, welcome to Painting of the Week. Today we are going to continue with our theme of human violence and brutality represented in art history. We are looking at the Mexican revolutionary and painter David Alfaro Siqueiros. Siqueiros was a member of Los Tres Grandes, which is a group of Mexican mural painters known for popularizing mural painting in the early 20th century. Uh, this group is also composed of Diego Rivera, who we're all somewhat familiar with. He's Frida's on and off husband, and um, Jose Orozco. All three of these painters are really revolutionary artists and also really radical active political figures. And it's worth noting that Siqueiros was really the most radical um, and most active of the three, which is really, really saying something. Um, Siqueiros fought in the Mexican Revolution at a young age. Later, when he's uh, mid-career, mid he's already a successful artist. He goes to Spain and fights in the Spanish Civil War. He comes back to Mexico and he leads a failed at assassination attempt on Leon Trotsky, who was very famously living with Frida and Diego in Mexico City at the time. Um, he's, he's now, after the failed attempt, he's on the run in his own country. Um, and again, the whole backdrop being that he's a, he's a successful artist, he's completing large commissions for the, for the state, um, and he just, he, he won't let up on his political activity. Um, so we're gonna spend more than one episode exploring Siqueiros as a historical figure, and then m most importantly, looking at his paintings, um, because we see so much of this radical technique uh, radical ideas represented in his painting in a way that for me makes him one of the most exciting art historical figures to talk about. The mural that we're looking at today is from 1950. It's called The Torment of Cuauhtémoc, who is the last Aztec emperor. He is the figure represented in the immediate foreground. Um, and this, this is obviously a representation of the Spanish conquest of Mexico. However, I think the, the picture is so successful in its distillation of the event that uh, you could have absolutely no reference for this historical event or for culture at large, uh, and you would still really be able to immediately understand what's happening here. Um, I mean, it feels like a really, an archetypal picture, uh, and I think that's the way the paint was put down. I mean, it feels like a battle between good and evil. This weather system in the back uh, really makes me feel like this is biblical. This is pr primordial. Um, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievably successful uh, in using a representational style, but simplifying it to the point where it's able to reach its largest, largest audience possible. Um, and you, ha you have to consider that mural painting was absolutely revolutionary in this regard. Uh, prior art was really only in rich people's homes, only recently had the I invention of the museum existed, the gallery existed, um, but more so to take art and put it in the public space um, is a really democratic, radical idea. Um, that I think we totally take for granted now because mural painting is so ubiquitous and thus like the kind of the the underpinning of it has been watered down. But um, this is something that Siqueiros and all of Los Tres Grandes would have been aware of um, how radical this idea of, of public art would have been. Um, so Siqueiros is employing a really simplified pictorial language in order to make the largest impact on the largest amount, the largest audience. Uh, and it's just, I mean, it's so unbelievably successful in that regard. I just, I just can't get over that. Um, we have a lot of echoes from our Goya painting, which we looked at last week, which would have been painted almost 150 years prior. Um, we, we see a figure on the left, ultra humanized. Um, she's making the kind of a, a gesture similar to that of Christ as well. And then on the right, we see just kind of this group of totally dehumanized figures 
Um, we saw it in the Goya painting in their grouping. They lost all their individualistic qualities. Here we see it in kind of an even more profound way um, where they, they're represented as robots, they're represented as machines, they, they've lost their humanity, uh, they are not individuals, they're predictable entities, and we know what they're here to do. Um, and I think the most, the, the most character we see coming from them is actually that of this dog who kind of speaks for the group with that ferocious, uh, ferocious face. So it's just, it's, it's unbelievable how powerful of a painting this is. You also need to keep in mind this painting is huge. Uh, you're gonna be totally swept up standing in front of this painting. I've actually been in front of this painting because it's at Bellas Artes in Mexico City. Um, and it's just huge. There's so much texture. It's just, it's just a really profound experience. Unfortunately, the painting is such that you can't really fully step back from it. So you're only ever gonna be able to engage with this painting probably at about six or eight feet maximum. So you're only able to get enough distance um, to really still take in portions of it at a time. But the point being, um, this is, this is a good introduction to Siqueiros. This is, he's a visceral painter. He's an aggressive painter. Um, and we see, we were able to see a lot of who he is represented in his work. What, what, he, what his thoughts are, what his ideals are, uh, where he stands as far as a judgment of history is concerned. Um, this is a great, great introduction to Siqueiros.